Could adding solar panels power your entire home for the next 25 years? Well, depending on the amount of roof space you have, the answer could well be a resounding yes. And I've just released a brand new and free utility to help you find out in just a few minutes. Hi there, I'm Gary and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. Wouldn't it be great if you could work out just how much solar energy your property could generate over the year and whether that would be enough to cover your annual electricity bill? There are some utilities out there to do that and one of the most popular is PV GIS from the European Commission. The trouble is it's more of a scientific tool and because of that it's not very user friendly. And it only calculates annual generation for one roof section. And if you're able to put panels on several roofs on your property, you'll have to program each roof separately and then combine the results in a spreadsheet or something. Not very convenient. Well, all that changes today. I've just released a brand new utility called Solarasma and it's incredibly easy to use. It allows multiple arrays and most importantly, it's free for anyone to use anywhere in the world. I can't wait to show you how it works so that you can get started on your solar journey. And later in the video, if you live in the UK, I'll also show you how you can find a great installer from a directory of installers that I trust with my own money. OK, let's get started. To get started with the utility, just enter solarasma.com into your browser. This is what the screen looks like. The utility works best on a laptop or desktop computer, but with a bit of dexterity, it is possible to run it on a mobile device as well. As you'll see, the screen splits into two halves. On the left is a bunch of settings, and we'll go through those in a moment. And on the right, the utility will soon show some solar generation graphs and tables based on the information you've entered in those settings. The first information required then is the location of your property, expressed as a latitude and longitude. Now don't worry if you don't know this information. I mean, who does? But we can get Google Maps to help us. Just click on this link here, which will open up a new browser tab and then locate your property. And once you've done that, you can right or control click on your property to bring up this sub menu. You'll see the latitude and longitude for that location displayed at the top of that menu. Just click on those values and they'll be automatically copied to your clipboard. Now go back to the utility and click on paste coordinates from clipboard and you'll see those values being populated into the correct fields above. Great. Now let's provide details about your solar arrays. A solar array is just a name for a collection of one or more panels on a single roof section. And depending on the roof space on your property, you may well be planning one or more of these arrays. And if you are planning more than one array, let's deal with the largest roof section first. The first thing we'll do then is name your array. This will typically be the direction it faces, for example, east or southwest, but it could be any name you want, like garage or garden office. In our example here, we'll choose south. The next field is the size of the array on that roof section. This will depend on the number of panels that you can fit onto that roof section and the wattage of each panel. I made a whole video on this topic here, which if you've not seen already, I'd highly recommend. The link is in the description. Now let's say you're able to fit 12 panels and each panel is 480 watts. That would give an array size of 12 times 480, which is 5,760 watts, or expressed as kilowatts is 5.76 kilowatts peak. We talk in terms of peak output because of course the generation from that array will depend on how much sunlight there is. We'll enter 5.76 into the size field here. Now we need to enter the orientation of the array. Our array is south facing, so looking at this handy compass bearing chart, that's 180 degrees. So we'll enter 180 here. To work out the orientation of your array, you can always go back to the Google Maps screen and work out the bearing. Or you can go outside and use the compass app on your smartphone. The next setting is the pitch of the array. This is the number of degrees your roof is from the horizontal. Zero degrees would be a flat roof, and 90 degrees would be a vertical wall. In our example, we'll enter 40 degrees. The next setting is the amount of shading that the array will be experiencing throughout the year. This could be from a nearby tree or chimney or even a neighboring building. Hopefully your array will not experience any shading at any time, so you can keep this setting at 0%, as we'll do here. But if you do get shading, set this to a value that you think is appropriate, say something like 20 or 30%. The final setting for this array is whether it is included or excluded from the results. 
We'll come back to this later as it's a very useful feature. Just leave it checked for the moment. OK, at this point we have enough information to see some results. Click the Calculated Annual Solar Generation button at the top right of the screen. The utility reaches out to the PVGIS servers to get the generation for all the settings entered so far. And after a few seconds you'll see a chart like this, showing the total estimated annual solar generation for that array broken down across each month of the year. Not surprisingly for this UK location, there's a lot more solar generation during the summer months than there is in the winter. The total for the year is shown at the top right of the chart, 5,925 kilowatt hours. Not bad at all for just 12 panels. You can hover over each month to see the actual generation for that month, or there is a table just below the chart which shows the same information, and you can download this table if you need to. We'll cover the other sections on this screen in a moment, but first let's add a second array. If your property can accommodate an array on its south facing roof, then it may also be able to accommodate a similar sized array on the other side facing north. Now I know you're thinking, hang on, what's the point of putting solar panels on a north roof? The sun never shines there. But with this utility we can actually see whether it's worth it or not. We'll name this second array then North. And we'll make it the same size as the south array, 5.76 kilowatts peak. You'll notice immediately that the chart disappears as soon as we make any changes. That's okay, we just need to complete all the changes before pressing the Calculate Annual Solar Generation button once more. The orientation of this array is north, so that's zero degrees using our handy little compass diagram from before, and we'll set the pitch of the roof to be the same as the south array at 40 degrees. We'll also assume there is no shading on this array, so we'll leave the shading slider to 0%. We're ready now to see the results, so click on the Calculate Annual Solar Generation button and again the utility will reach out to the PVGIS servers with these latest settings, and it only takes a few seconds. You can see that the solar generation chart is a little different this time, in that it shows the total generation for both the arrays at just under 9000 kilowatt hours for the year, but it also shows the split in generation across the arrays, orange for the south array and yellow for the north. As before, you can hover over parts of the chart to see individual values, or you can view them in the table below. And if we scroll down further, we can look at the individual generation charts for each array. And below that, we can see the percentage contribution for each array to the total split across each month. What's interesting is that in the winter months, you can see that the contribution of the north array is quite low, it's only around 20%, but in the summer, it's not far off 50%, quite surprising really. And if we go back to the table, you can see that the contribution averages out at around about 34% across the whole year. So if you have both a south and a north roof, actually getting your north roof done at the same time might well be worth it. Now, you might be thinking, let's say my annual usage is 7000 kilowatt hours per year, which is around about 583 kilowatt hours a month, and we can draw a line on the chart to show that usage. In the summer months we're generating far more than that, so we can easily cover our usage, and with a home battery installed at the same time, we can store excess generation and power our home even on cloudy days with minimal sunlight. But in the winter months there's just not enough solar generation to cover that usage. Well, there are a few things to remember. During the winter you can charge your home battery overnight using affordable off-peak energy rates. This stored energy can then power your home throughout the next day. And in the summer, when you're generating way more energy than you can use, if you're able to get paid for that energy by exporting it back to the grid, you can use that money to cover the cost of all that off-peak energy you purchased during the winter. And if you live in the UK, there's a really good solution from Octopus Energy with one of their smart tariffs called Intelligent Octopus Flux. It's really innovative, and I've made a whole video on that tariff here, Again, the link is in the description. But in summary, with this tariff, you get paid the same for electricity as you pay, which means the grid essentially acts like an infinite battery. You can fill it full of all that excess generation in the summer and get it back out in the winter to cover the shortfall. I mean, it's quite genius. In my opinion, Octopus Energy is by far the best energy provider in the UK, and if you switch to them using my referral code here, you'll get £50 credited to your account, and you'll also be helping the channel as I'll get £50 as well. Thank you.
All right then, to complete the picture, let's add a couple more arrays. First, we'll add a smaller solar array on, let's say, a garage roof, which is lean to the property. That roof is west facing and it can hold six panels, each of 480 watts. So that's a total of 2.88 kilowatts peak. And the west orientation from our compass diagram is 270 degrees. The pitch of the garage roof is slightly less at 30 degrees and there is some shading from an adjacent property, which I'll estimate to be 30%. Then finally, we'll add a fourth array, this time a very small array, just two panels, on a shed with a flat roof. So that's two times 480 watts, which equals 0.96 kilowatts peak. Now, because it's a flat roof, it doesn't actually matter what orientation we put, so we'll just use zero. And of course, the pitch will also be zero. There is a very slight amount of shading on the shed roof, so we'll set the slider to 10%. We're ready now to click the Calculate Annual Solar Generation button. After a few seconds, you can see that all four arrays are present in the total estimated solar generation chart now, with a total annual estimate of 11,329 kilowatt hours. And if we look at the table below, you can see it's fully populated now. And below that, we can see the individual array charts if we need them. And finally, as before, you can see the individual percentage contributions from each array in a chart. OK, if we go back up to the top, I can now show you the array inclusion checkboxes in action. Let's say we weren't sure about going for the north array. We can simply exclude this from the calculations by clicking here. In fact, we can do this for any of the arrays so that you can get a very good idea of the total generation you'll get for any combination of arrays. Pretty powerful. OK, to finish off then, let's have a look at a couple of advanced settings. The first setting, System Power Loss, is a measure of the percentage loss of power generated by your solar panels by the time it gets through the string inverter or microinverters and also the cabling. Longer cables will mean greater losses. PV GIS defaults this setting to 14%, so I've done the same here in this utility. But in reality, solar technology and equipment is getting more efficient all the time so you could always reduce this figure if you want. Check the data sheets for your equipment to see what a reasonable value might be. And the second setting, PV technology, is all about how efficient your solar panels are with things like changing temperatures. When a solar panel is labelled 480 watts, it means that with the right conditions, not least a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, it will output 480 watts. If the temperature is higher than that, and on very sunny days the temperature on your roof will be a lot higher, the efficiency of your solar panels will reduce. This reduction in efficiency is called the temperature coefficient, and you'll typically find a chart on your solar panel datasheet detailing this. The good news is that today's crystalline silicon material used in panels has a much lower temperature coefficient than panels made a few years ago. PVGIS has recognised this, so in the utility here, it defaults to 2025 technology. You can see the difference if I change it back to the original technology, maybe a 5% drop in generation. Finally, please note that PVGIS doesn't currently cater for clipping, where your solar panels are generating at a level higher than your inverter can process. See my video here all about that, and I would suggest that you use the shading sliders to reduce your generation by, say, 5-10% to 10 over the whole year, if your system is experiencing a fair amount of clipping on sunny days. Alright then, there you go. I hope you like the utility, and I'd love to hear your feedback on it. I'm hoping that when you try it out, you'll see that getting solar panels on your property makes a lot of sense. And of course, you'll want to reach out to a solar installer to get things rolling. To help with that, if you live in the UK, I have a directory of installers that I'd personally trust with my own money to do a great job. Just type getreadyfor.solar into your browser or scan the QR code here to connect with them and get quotations. OK, that's it for this video. I really enjoyed developing this utility and I hope that tens of thousands of people across the world will use it to see if solar is right for them. Please can you help me in that quest then by sharing the link to the utility itself or this video with your friends and family. Thank you. My next action is to develop a special version of the utility for my Patreon supporters. That version will have lots of extra features, including support for different inverter sizes and also more accurate shading measurement. Sign up to my Patreon here if you'd like to follow me on that journey, and I've purposely kept the pricing as low as I can. 
See you all in my next video.